Welcome to my new series, Drag Race Game Changers. My name's Jack, and this is a series for queens who forged a path that's changed the drag race landscape. The name Game Changers is general enough to where I can include a lot of queens here, so I'm hoping by the end you guys realize why each of these stars has influenced the show in a different way. And I think I know the best place to start. Once again, Naomi Smalls. This can be considered a pseudo-sequel video to the one I released back in December. I always wanted to go in more depth about Naomi's All-Stars run because there's a lot of change that came out of the choices that she made. For those who didn't watch the first video, I talked about how production adapted to Naomi doming a lip sync and sending home a frontrunner. A queen who wasn't really given the time to shine in an edit was rewarded for winning a lip sync and then dominated the second half of the competition. And honestly, her time on Season 8 and All-Stars 4 are pretty similar. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Naomi saw exponential growth in popularity after her original season, and then it skyrocketed after All-Stars. Today, I'm going to break down Naomi's season up to the end where she had the chance to make an interesting choice. First, I just think that Naomi's run is really commendable on All-Stars 4. I think some placements were a little interesting for her, so just breaking those down, it'll make me really satisfied. But of course, this is Game Changers, so I want to talk about a choice Naomi made. A choice made on the season that was so disliked by a majority of the fandom that it completely changed the format for the rest of the show. A choice that's so insanely obvious on paper that queens were afraid to take it. Not Naomi, though. I have just three words for you. Life's not fair. You know what is fair though? Today's sponsor. <laughs> I'm sorry. Once again, today's video is sponsored by Babbel. Babbel is an award-winning app that can help a user learn a new language in just a couple weeks. I've been streaming a lot recently, and one of my favorite things to do is interact with the viewers, and a lot of people have told me about summer trips that they're taking. My viewers are talking about going to countries where they may not know the language, but Babbel has you covered. At its core, the app teaches you natural sounding oh, yeah. conversation as opposed to something that you may just learn in school, See? and it's designed by real professionals who want to get you out there speaking the language yeah as natural as possible. It's been a couple months since I started using Babbel, I just started to check out Spanish again, sí. and still one of my favorite features is the speech recognition software. Gracias. Gracias. It's so funny. Gracias. Hola. Hola. The app is endlessly interactive, and I think that's what you need, especially when you're learning something like a new language. So if you're interested, I got a deal for you, and I think you're going to yeah. enjoy it. Start speaking a new language in three weeks with Babbel. You can get up to 65% off your subscription with my link in the description. Check out Babbel because I know you're going to enjoy it. What we saw in Naomi's original season was a wonderful fashion queen who had the potential to be pretty funny. There were points over the competition where she was able to break out of her shell and give them the personality they wanted, a common critique among fashion queens. Season 8 Naomi though still struggled in a lot of aspects, so seeing her come back for All Stars brings into question, has she developed any new skills? Episodes 1-3 to three had Naomi placed high each week, barely missing out on a win each time. The first two challenges were not things completely in her wheelhouse from what we saw on the show, with the third being Snatch Game, the challenge that originally almost at her home. The talent show from episode 1 highlighted Naomi's strengths as a performer while still staying much in her brand. Just like with her lip syncs, Naomi doesn't really bring out a lot of tricks when she's performing. She's just able to use the skills that she knows she has and plays into what the judges want. On paper, if I told someone Naomi's talent was posing and strutting, they would probably guess she wouldn't be placed very well. But something about Naomi's presentation carries her performance. Were there some other talents that probably deserved more recognition? Of course. But that shouldn't take away from the fact that Naomi still did very good in this challenge. Episode 2, she's thrown into the world of VH1 with her first verse and girl group performance. She's again placed high for another great performance full of energy and some really good lyrics. Episode 3, Naomi places high once again in Snatch Game where she exhibited a lot of growth as a performer. She was able to let go, have fun, and give us a really iconic moment in the challenge that almost sent her home originally. Oh, you got Hi, Wendy. <laughs> What I've noticed All Stars doing with certain placements of queens early on is setting up how they've evolved over time. We saw this with Raja on All Stars 6 getting a mini redemption arc in the first couple episodes. And then we see it here again with Naomi excelling in performance and comedy, something that people didn't really expect her to do good in. The thing is, Naomi really never saw herself as a fashion queen, it was just the box that she was thrown in by everyone on the cast and the producers. Even though I made it all the way to the top three, a lot of people still think I'm just a tall, pretty fashion model. I'm gonna seize this opportunity to show show the world that I'm not just this beauty queen. There's only one crown and it's mine. So then she's put to the test to see if she's more than just a fashion queen and she excels in the first three challenges of the season. 
It's a really nice mini arc that also sets up the storyline for the rest of the season where she's very consistent in the challenges but sometimes falls into the background. And we see her fall into the background for the first time in episode 4, getting a little overshadowed by Manila. Again, Naomi did pretty good in the performance, but I think there's just no beating Manila when it comes to comedy stuff. But she did hold her own for the most part, and that's very commendable. Then we get to the roast, and uh, yeah, not very good, but half of the cast weren't great either, so let's just throw the whole challenge away. When up for elimination this episode, though, she's brought up a couple times saying that she's done consistently well, but then they further push her storyline by the queen saying that she's kind of falling into the background, or they forget about her. In the end of the episode, though, even though she was falling into the background a little bit, she was neither of the queen's Choices. Then we get to the Lala Perusa, which wasn't really a storyline episode for Naomi, but yeah, of course she had one of the best lip syncs of the entire franchise. What's clear once we get to this episode is that Naomi doesn't really have a lot of storyline with anyone on the season anymore. Outside of having a really nice talk with Gia, she just doesn't have a lot of stakes like the other queens. Everything is just starting to stack against her, and even with a killer, killer lip sync, there's still this feeling that she may be the next to go. She's explained before how she kind of has to fight off a lot of the perception that she gets that she's only a fashion queen or she didn't deserve her top three placement and we're starting to see it again here with the girls underestimating her even though she was doing really well at the beginning of the season finally episode 7 saw the crossroads between who should be pushed to the end between valentina and naomi she showed a lot of patience this time around with valentina who was living her fantasy as we all know naomi wrote most of the material and guided the club as much as possible they may have landed in the bottom but club 96 will live on in infamy club 96 with this episode, it's still clear that Naomi is fighting to stay in the game even if the girls aren't completely seeing it. In the end, both Trinity and Latrice pick Valentina to go home, seeing the potential and the fight in Naomi to stick around. Episode 8 starts the final leg of Naomi's arc while adding another layer to her arc in the season as a whole. Before we get into the moment that completely changed the All-Stars format, I'll finish up her run on the season. Naomi wins the challenge for not playing it safe and giving a really iconic runway. She then dominates the lip sync once again and moves on to top 5. On to top 5, she's thrown into the bottom and receives some of the harshest critiques. I don't think she characterized her role super well, but there wasn't a ton her, Latrice, or Monet could do to make their parts entertaining. It was Sex and the Kitty Girl, so yeah, let's just throw this one in the trash too. Even with not the best performance, she still makes it to top 4. At the end of the day, once Naomi landed in the bottom more times than she won, she was definitely too far behind to be considered a clear winner. Stacking up against three other queens who had more wins and less bottom placements, it just wasn't her season to win. She goes out on one of the best runways of all time and lives on as a queen who likes to shake shit up. So let's get back to that. Life's not fair. Life's not fair. So, bitch, good luck and so back in episode 8 where Naomi got in the top, she had a choice. Eliminate the safer option in Latrice who just came back to the competition with only one win under her belt, or eliminate the biggest threat in Manila who had three wins and no bottom placements up to this point. Keep in mind, however, Latrice did save her the previous week and we're getting down to the wire with only one competitive episode left. Because it was so close to the end, playing it safe wouldn't be as appealing because that just gets the frontrunner one step closer to making it to the top. But playing it too recklessly by eliminating the frontrunner could result in Naomi's elimination in the following week. So what did she do? I'm so sorry that I have to send home Manila. To me, this is the moment that destroyed the All-Stars format. Everyone up to that point saw Manila as the winner, with only Trinity really posing a threat in the future. Manila herself saw the giant target on her back and wasn't even shocked when Naomi made the choice. Like I said at the beginning of the video, the choice to eliminate the biggest threat is so obvious that only few people have taken it. But when given the power and the chance to finally stand out after being overshadowed for weeks, Naomi took it and made one of the biggest moments ever. Strategy-wise, of course I have to get into strategy, what's a Jack 5 video without some strategy talk, I think Naomi played a really perfect game here. With only one competitive episode left, Naomi eliminated the front runner, allowing for herself and the others to have more potential to win in the end. Naomi also said that she didn't think Manila had her back, so if she landed in the bottom in the following week, there was the likely chance that she would go home by the hands of Manila. So instead, she chose to keep Latrice around, who saved her the previous week and would be more likely to save her again. Along with this, Latrice had the worst track record out of the girls because she came back to the competition halfway through, so she would be the more likely target to eliminate next instead of Naomi. To be completely honest, I don't know how much Naomi was thinking about the strategy going in. She mentioned a couple things, but for the most part, I think she just wanted a big TV moment. And I truly think that this wraps up her storyline on the season really well. On both of Naomi's seasons, it feels like the queens underestimate her and she's put into a box where she doesn't think she belongs. It seems like to her, the way to get the attention is to eliminate a queen that is considered a frontrunner. 
And with All Stars 4, she got that attention and made waves in ways that queens haven't before. The All Stars format for 2, 3, and most of 4 saw majority justified eliminations based off of critiques or track record. Anytime a queen wasn't eliminated quote fairly, fans would get upset, queens would receive backlash, and it caused a rift of other competitors worried to do the same. All Stars 4 up to episode 7 saw almost every elimination backed with the justification of track record. Queens are given the power to eliminate anyone in the bottom if they win the top 2 lip sync. If a queen is doing well and then lands in the bottom, there should be the rightful justification to send them packing if you you want a clearer path to the end. And yet, still so many queens decide not to do it. I get it from a viewer's perspective wanting to see the frontrunner make it to the end because of course the winner should be the person who does the best. But from a competitor's perspective, why would you keep around the obvious frontrunner if you're trying to win? Trinity said at the top of the episode she wants to be in the top with the best and if she wants to win she has to beat the best. I want to be in the top with the best. and. If I'm gonna win, I wanna beat the best. But of course, as Heidi put it, But like the gag is everyone's always like, when they get onto the show, they're like, I want to beat the best, so I'm gonna keep them around. I'm like, but if you send her home right now, you beat the best. So. <laughs> you did beat the best. You sent her home. You're given the opportunity to beat the best, just not in the final episode, but queens just don't take it and it makes no sense. The finale episode when it's not the lip sync for the crown is just an extra lap for the queens with the front runner obviously going to be crowned. There are some cases where a queen justifies their win in the finale, but for the most part and how some of these all-star seasons are going, it seems like the producers have a clear winner. So regardless of what you do, making it to the end with the front runner will just most likely result in their win. But if you're given the opportunity to get the front runner out halfway through the competition, you should take it because it's a clearer path to the top. Even though Naomi didn't win the season, this choice completely altered the path of so much that has happened on the show. Of course, Manila is seen as a Rob's competitor who has found a lot of success regardless of not winning. We have the twinners who are back for All-Star 7 who are both doing extremely well, and life without them opens up so much for their careers in a different timeline, and it's kind of weird to think about. But of course, the biggest thing that was changed was the nail that Naomi put in the coffin of the All-Stars format. This is the easiest choice that I have had to make this entire season. I'm going home. What? One can argue the first sign that the format wasn't sustainable was Ben de la Creme eliminating herself the season prior. Of course, the competition got to her and being in the top five times and having to choose a queen to eliminate basically every week is very stressful. But I feel like the producers could almost write off Daly's elimination as a one-off thing tied to her character only. But now grouped in with Manila's elimination, Daly's choice seems a lot bigger. The format was now the same for three seasons with the past two seasons creating some very, very interesting choices that didn't go over well with the fans. It was almost as if fans were frustrated and saying, ugh, what's next? What's the next crazy thing that's gonna happen with this stupid format? With Naomi's choice going over insanely poorly in the fandom with ratings tanking in the last two episodes, the showrunners knew it was time for a change. Of course, RuPaul still probably didn't want to eliminate any of the girls, but there was probably some apprehension in giving queens the full choice. So what did they do? They implemented democracy. The lip sync assassin twist was a cute idea that worked in All-Star 6, but not so much in All-Stars 5. I could go into detail about how awkward it makes the track records with a shorter season, but let's stay on track record. Uh, stupid. Each week there's only one top all-star as opposed to two. The top all-star still has the choice to eliminate a queen based on their decision alone. The other queens will then vote on who they think should go home. The queen with the most votes will have their lipstick chosen and then be given to a lipstick assassin who's going to try and win a lip sync and send the girl home who the group voted for. Basically, the top all-star has ultimate choice while the lip sync assassin represents the majority group. This format is a cleverly disguised way to keep eliminations as fair as possible. What I didn't mention with Manila's elimination was, no matter who won the lip sync, both of them chose for Manila to go home. Even if Naomi didn't wipe the floor with Monet, who I believe threw the lip sync, Manila's fate was sealed. So to then have a system in place where a majority of the queens would most likely play super fair, they can manipulate the choices in the end. You're a liar. 
and this is why Derek don't like you. For example, All Star 6 Episode 1 saw Yara and the top wanting to eliminate TKB, but the group chose to eliminate Serena Chacha. The lip sync assassin and Coco performed well enough in the lip sync to justify her win and eliminate the group choice. Because the top All Star and lip sync assassin had different queens to be eliminated, the producers can kind of work around who they want to push and have the according lip syncer win in the end. I don't think that this is always the case, but I think that very equal lip syncs are influenced by producer choice and what the queens have on their lipstick. I think it's a really fun twist, but it's also definitely a fail safe in the off chance they overplay their hand and have their front runner land in the bottom. Adding on to Naomi's choice in the backlash she got following the episode, it caused a lot of queens to play safer in the following seasons. Silky was worried to go after Jan harder in episode 3 because of the toxic part of the fandom, so instead she took majority of the fall. Alexis and Mayhem were almost seen as pariahs after voting for Shay because the rest of the queens were trying to play it fair. So we see that queens who try to emulate Naomi's choices are pegged as a target, while the rest of the queens who played safe give the front runners more chances to stay in the front. It's honestly such a lose-lose situation, and even though I love Naomi's choice, it did create a lot of predictable and stale gameplay in the following seasons. And then we get to the run back of this four format on UK versus the world. This season, oh god, why do I always end up talking about this season? This season was full of moments that were very much like Naomi's choice and I think that's amazing. Pangina and Blue were not afraid to eliminate the frontrunners, and it got Blue the win in the end. Of course, the backlash was still there, and it was just as bad as Naomi's, but it's clear they saw the opportunity and wanted to take it because they saw how much it shook up All Stars 4, and yeah, it really shook up UK vs. The World as well. Obviously, people were upset this season feels a little lopsided and weird at points, but as for gameplay, I found it really interesting that they played the game to its full potential. It's impossible to tell if Naomi's choice was what pushed the showrunners to switch the format, but I know it was definitely a factor. I teased this video a couple days prior to recording, and there were some people in the comments confused why I considered Naomi a game changer. And what I have to say to that is that she literally changed the game of All Stars as we know it. Even if you don't think she had a hand in the format switch, there's queens that are still calling it Manila to this day. The gameplay and fear of backlash was definitely caused by Naomi and what she received online. But hey, regardless of her placement and Manila's placement on All Stars, for, they both received a ton of fans and praise for what they accomplished on the show. The choice was iconic, and though neither of them won, I know it wasn't a career killer at all. Years later, even though some people still really hate this choice, Naomi has now been adopted as one of the fan favorites of the show. She's really owned this moment and played it up as a part of her character, which I think is just so smart, and obviously she's one of my favorites. It's a, a moment that made people watch the show and people keep talking about. The iconic, life's not fair. Is it though? <laughs> it's really not. I just really wanted to see that bitch go home. <laughs> but really, I just didn't trust the bitch. Work. And I needed her to go home. Work. Because I knew I was going to go further. Work. And that's what, like, the competition is all about. I can make so many videos just talking about how much I love Naomi, but I think I'm going to call it here. Because surprise, I'm going to be talking about her again very soon. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thanks again to Babbel for sponsoring this video again. If you thought Naomi was the game changer, just wait until you try Babbel. I'll see you guys soon with another video.